Hello students, in the previous video, we talked about structure of DNA. The DNA is made up of polymer of nucleotide. The nucleotide is consisting of three components, that is pentose sugar, nitrogenous bases and the phosphoric acid. Today, let us talk about the salient features of double helix structure of DNA. The structure of DNA was given by Watson and Crick. The model of the DNA they called as DNA double helix. Now, what is meant by this DNA double helix? Let us keep talking about the points which they gave. The first one, the DNA is consisting of two strands. And each strand is consisting of a long chain of nucleotides. So here we can see it is consisting of two strands. And these two strands are consisting of a long chain of nucleotides. The first one. It is consisting of two strands. That's why it is called as an DS. Means it is a double stranded structure. And it is consisting of polynucleotide. The third one. The pentosugar and the phosphate group. It forms the backbone of the DNA. So now we can see this is the pentose sugar and the phosphate. It forms the backbone of the DNA and the nitrogenous species which are projected inside. Pentose sugar and the phosphate, it forms the backbone of the DNA. The nitrogenous species projected inside. The two chains have anti-parallel polarity means the one strand is consisting of 5 prime to 3 prime, another strand from 3 prime to 5 prime. So that is meant by this anti-parallel polarity. We can compare with the spiral staircase. When we start climbing up the staircase with the two railings, the two railings move parallel to each other without crossing each other. In DNA, it is consisting of two strands which move parallel to each other. The next one, two chains have anti-parallel polarity. The next point, purines always pair with the pyramidons. Adenine it is going to pair with the thymine with two hydrogen bond and guanine it is going to pair with the cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. Adenine it is going to pair with thymine with two hydrogen bond and the guanine it is going to pair with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. Now we can see here adenine it is going to pair with the thymine with two hydrogen bonds and the thymine it is going to pair with the adenine with the two hydrogen bonds. Cytosine it is going to pair with the guanine and here the guanine it is going to pair with the cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. The two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds. Two strands held together by hydrogen bonds. Because of this hydrogen bonds between the two strands, it forms the curves in the DNA. So that's why when we see the structure of DNA, it forms a helically coiled structure. When we take the two ribbons and we just twist that ribbon, so it looks like the same the DNA. Now we will see the three dimensional structure of the DNA. How this hydrogen bonds, it forms the curves and it leads to the formation of a DNA double helical structure. Now, this is the three dimensional double helical structure of DNA. Because of the hydrogen bonds between the two strands, it forms the curves in the DNA. So that why it leads to the formation of helical structure. So now this is the DNA. Here it is the Phosphate and the pentose sugar, it forms the backbone and nitrogen bases are projected to inside. These are the hydrogen bond between the two strands. Now, here it is a small depression, it is there. It is called as a minor groove. Here it is 
major groups. So between the two successive minor groups, it forms the pitch of the DNA. Pitch of DNA. And the pitch of DNA in one turn, it measures about 3.4 nanometer. 3.4 nanometer. So it is called as an one turn of the DNA. The one turn of the DNA is called pitch of DNA. It measures about 3.4 nanometer. In one turn, it is consisting of 10 base pairs. Here it is one base pair, like that it is consisting of 10 base pairs. So here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 base pairs. In one turn. In each consecutive base pairs, it measures about 0.34 nanometer. So in each consecutive base pairs, it measures about 0.34 nanometer. The width of the DNA is 2 nanometer. So here we can write the width of the DNA is 2 nanometers. So once again we will revise whatever we have discussed. The first one, the DNA is made up of 2 strands and each strand is made up of polymer of nucleotides. Phosphate and the pentose sugar forms the backbone of the DNA and the nitrogen bases are projected to inside. The two chains have anti-parallel polarity means it is the one strand it is consisting of 5 prime to 3 prime, another from 3 prime to 5 prime. Purines always pair with the pyrimidines that is adenine it is going to pair with the thymine with two hydrogen bonds. Cytosine it is going to pair with the guanine with three hydrogen bonds. The pitch of the DNA it measures about 3.4 nanometer. The pitch of the DNA means two successive minor group or two successive major groups. It measures about 3.4 nanometer. In one turn of the DNA, it is consisting of 10 base pairs. Each consecutive base pairs, it measures about 0.34 nanometer and the width of the DNA is 2 nanometer. So this, this is about the salient features of double helix structure of DNA. The next we are going to study about the types of DNA. The types of DNA, B DNA, A DNA, Z DNA. The differences between the types of DNA, first one is pitch length, means the pitch of the DNA is a one turn of the DNA. Either it is two successive major group or two successive minor groups. It measures about 3.4 nanometer in B DNA. Whatever we have discussed the important features of double helix structure of DNA which was given by Watson and Crick that is BDNA. In ADNA it measures about 2.86 nanometer. In ZDNA it is 4.4 nanometer. The coiling. It is the BDNA in a right handed fashion. ADNA right handed fashion. The ZDNA it coils in a left handed fashion. Diameter of the B DNA 2 nanometer, A DNA 2.6 nanometer, and Z DNA 1.8 nanometer. Base pairs in one turn. In one turn, it is consisting of 10 base pairs in B DNA, in A DNA it is 11, and in Z DNA it is 12. Now we will study the two rules of DNA. The first one is base pair rule. According to the base pair rule, purines always pair with the pyrimidines. That is, adenine always going to pair with the thymine with two hydrogen bond and the guanine it is always going to pair with the cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. The first rule, that is, base pair rule. According to this, purines always pairs with the pyrimidines. 
the purines which are present in the DNA that is adenine and guanine. Adenine. Guanine. The pyrimidines which are present in the DNA that is thymine and cytosine. with two hydrogen bond and the guanine it is always going to pair with the cytosine with three hydrogen bond. This is the one thing which help us to identify or to know the sequence of DNA strand if we know the sequence of one strand. For example we can take the DNA strands. The DNA is made up of two strands and these two strands are having anti -parallel. So here 5 prime to 3 prime. So now we will write the sequence of one strand A, T, C, G. So if we know the one strand, we can identify the others, another strand. So we already know that the purines always pairs with the pyrimidines. Adenine it is going to pair with the thymine. Thymine it is going to pair with the adenine. Cytosine it is going to pair with the guanine. And guanine it is going to pair with the cytosine. So this is the base pair rule. Now we'll see the another one rule that is Chargaff's rule. The next one is Chargaff's rule. The always purines is equal to pyramidus, that is adenine is equal to thymine and the guanine is equal to cytosine. Adenine is equal to thymine and the guanine is equal to cytosine. Now this is an equal sign, means here it represents the number of the nitrogenous bases which are present in the DNA. So here A is equal to T and G is equal to cytosine that is C. Now we can take the example here. Here it is 5 prime to 3 prime, 5 prime to 3 prime. So A, T, C, G, C. In front of A it is T, in front of T, A, in front of C, G, C, G. So now we will Count the number. How many adenine it is there? 1, 2. So here 2 adenine. And how many thymine it is there? 1, 2. So 2 is equal to 2. Now we will count the number of guanine. 1, 2, 3. So here it is 3. Cytosine 1, 2, 3. Is equal to 3. That is 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. That means A plus G divided by T plus C is always equal to 1. It is a constant. If it is A plus T divided by G plus C, it leads to the variations. In all individuals, if it is A plus G divided by T plus C, it is always equal to 1. But if the ratio between the A plus T divided by G plus C, it always leads to the variations. So this is about the Charkov's rule. In the next video, we will discuss about the packaging of the DNA. How the long DNA, it will be packed in the nucleus. Thank you.